Well, it looks like the White House is moving the goalposts on the definition of recession. What's up, guys? I'm nobody special, and I'm enjoying what's left of my weekend right now here, taking in some time by the pool because we have a wild week ahead of us with the big tech earnings and then the Federal Reserve and then the big GDP number coming out on Thursday. There's just all this economic data. It's going to be a nutty week in markets. But the big thing is on Thursday, we find out finally that we're actually in a recession. Almost every economic indicator that's out there is pointing to a second consecutive quarter of negative economic growth, negative growth in GDP. That means we're in a recession. And you know what, just about anybody you ask will tell you they're making some kind of sacrifices because of inflation or this or that, or having trouble making ends meet, or their work, their office is cutting back, there's a hiring freeze going on, possibly even layoffs. So everybody knows we're in a recession right now. It's just not official. But check this out. The White House just released this little note, and it looks like they plan on changing the definition. What is a recession, they say. While some maintain that two consecutive quarters of falling real GDP constitute a recession, that is neither the official definition nor the way economists evaluate the state of the business cycle. Instead, both official determinations of recessions and economists' assessment of economic activity are based on a holistic look at the data, including the labor market, consumer business spending, industrial production, and incomes. Based on these data, it is unlikely that the decline in GDP in the first quarter of this year, even if followed by another GDP decline in the second quarter, indicates a recession. Well, isn't that a mouthful? First of all, yes it is. Two consecutive quarters of negative economic growth is just about everybody's definition of a recession. I'm sure Robert Reek and Paul Krugman are going to come out next week and say, no, it's not a real recession, and I'm sure all the people at the White House are going to use their word salad to try to make it seem like things are good. They're going to gaslight the whole country. But no, we're definitely in a recession right now. And look at some of the measures that they're talking about in this White House memo here to make the excuse that we're not in a recession. Let's see some of them. What are they talking about here? The labor market. Okay, the labor market does look pretty good, at least on the surface, right? We've only got 3.6% unemployment. That's incredibly low. But why do we have 3.6% unemployment? The reason? Because so many people have left the workforce. And why have so many people left the workforce? Because it's not worth their time to work. Because inflation is so high and the wages that are being offered at these jobs, it's not worth people's time to go into work. One parent is staying home because the cost of childcare has gone up by 25% in a year, even though the wages have only gone up 2 or 3%. And so it's not worth their time to go into the office. That's not a strong labor market. That's a labor market that needs to raise their wages, something the Federal Reserve doesn't want to happen. They don't want wages to increase because that causes more inflation. They would rather cause a recession and make those jobs go away rather than have a labor shortage. They would rather crash asset prices so that people who retired, their nest egg is no longer enough for the rest of their life, and older folks are forced back into the labor market because their 401k or their IRA or their pension isn't worth as much anymore. That's what they're trying to do to us. That's not a strong labor market by any measure. They also talk about consumer and business spending. Look, consumer spending is all going on the credit card right now. Consumers aren't out there spending money because times are good and they feel wealthier. Consumers are out there putting food and putting their bills on the credit card. That's not a sustainable trend. That just goes to show you that the consumers are on life support. And what happens when those credit cards are maxed out? What happens when they can't rack up any more new debt? Well, now they have to stop spending on everything else. And we're already starting to see that. Remember in those AT&T earnings this week, people are not paying their phone bills. And we saw a video from a guy named Lucky Lopez not too long ago that says car repossessions are on the rise dramatically. So people aren't paying their car payments. That's not a healthy consumer. That's a consumer that's on life support. And business spending, just about every company that reports their earnings is talking about a slowdown in hiring, a hiring freeze, a reduction in capex. So business spending isn't strong either. Industrial production? Forget it. We just got a Philly Fed Manufacturing Index this week that shows industrial production is way down. And we got a PMI report this week, the Purchasing Managers Index, that shows businesses are not investing in future deliveries in more production. They're all cutting back their spend. So that's not that good. And lastly, the White House mentions incomes. And talk about gaslighting. Talk about insulting people's intelligence. Everybody knows incomes are not rising as fast as inflation. Everybody knows that. Most people got a 2.5%, 3% raise. I think the actual official numbers are like 4% wage increases for the national average this year, even though headline CPI is 9.1%. 
and we all know the actual rate of inflation is really closer to 17 or 18 percent if you actually look at how much the cost of living has gone up and not these BS statistics that they use in the CPI calculations. So incomes are nowhere near keeping up with the rate of inflation. So any way you look at it, the White House is just totally gaslighting people right now by insisting that they're not in a recession. And they're already starting this wishy-washy language to try to cover themselves because their poll numbers are in the toilet where they belong, to be honest with you. And look for a lot of this garbage in the mainstream media over the next couple of days where they all try to talk about how, okay, maybe it's a technical recession but it's not actually a recession or it's only you know a high unemployment recession or you know I like to say they'll call it a transitory recession maybe that's what they use but push comes to shove any way you look at it we're in a recession now the soft landing that Jay Powell promised us is not going to materialize Jerome Powell is a guy that jumped out of a 20-story building and he's fallen 18 floors and he's saying so far so good there is no soft landing on the horizon for this economy and we're going to find out this week just how bad. We've got big tech earnings, we've got the Federal Reserve hiking rates, and we've got GDP on Thursday. So eat your weenies, folks. we got a crazy week ahead of us, and we're going to be covering every bit of it. So subscribe to my channel, like this video, and until next time, live small and dream big.